Well guys, got a bit of a video for you. <clears throat> this one here is of course of the uh, old classic beachcomber uh, B15 uh, camper trailer. I guess you could call this um, part one of uh, getting it ready for the 2013 uh, uh, camping season or, or so. Well, of course, um, one of the things that have been uh, thorn in my side since the day I bought it is this uh, rubber down here in the bottom corner. The other sides are passable. They are rippling a little bit, but not nearly as bad as this side. This side looks like it's been uh, snagged or, or torn at one time, and they washered it to uh, get her better, but uh, looks like it was stretched or something. Upon uh, closer inspection, I took out one uh, screw. I took out one screw, and it looks like there's been uh, bodywork or something done back here at um, at one time. So basically, I'm gonna set you up here. I'm gonna remove the remaining screws, and we'll see what we find. Okay, so I've undone the screws. Um, the top row here, as you've seen with the washers. I even went as far as coming over here and undoing the side row here. They weren't held in with washers, but um, I start to peel back. Looks like they used some kind of adhesive on the side here. Just kind of pull it down, keep it from tearing, because you may end up using this or reusing this again. Okay, so upon further inspection here, we see some uh, rock damage and uh, some stress cracking, of course, and looks like some sandblasting from uh, from gravel over the years, as you can kind of see by the front of this trailer. When you're pulling it with your truck, it uh, any gravel basically hits the trailer and it kind of looks like it's sandblasting it through. Of course, there's another row of screws uh, on the bottom side, but I just wanted to open that up and see if there's any, uh, was any gaping holes or, uh, you know, where someone had, uh, you know, hit something or, or so over the years and just covered it up with that piece of rubber. It looks okay, other than the rubber being a bit uh, torn and weathered. Maybe a guy could fix it, reuse it, or maybe find something suitable as a replacement to uh, put on there. Another uh, idea is to rip uh, the whole rubber off all the way across the front and uh, truck bed coat the whole entire front of this trailer. I'd like to truck bed coat the whole uh, front of the trailer, but um, looks like it's going to be the lower portion for right now. So let's uh, continue on here and uh, we'll see how far we get. So after you got the rubber matting removed um, pretty much all the way across on both sides you see that there is no um, holes. There is a stress crack or a, um, what do you want to call it age uh, crack right here but nothing that's uh, nothing that's not um, you know, uh, acceptable. <clears throat> There's no uh, collision damage or great big rock holes or anything like that. However, of course, before you can uh, paint this or bedline it or whatever, you should probably get off the dirt. And um, you're gonna have to remove the adhesive as well. So of course, before I start sanding, I like to give it a good old scrub down to uh, remove any of the uh, dirt or anything that's on it then that way you can see what you're sanding and uh, then you can determine what type of glue they used. Whatever type of glue they used um, wasn't adhering the way they wanted it to. So that's why they threw in the screws. 
if they would have used the correct screws, the rubber would have adhered um, and they wouldn't have had to uh, put screws in. So of course, uh, you can take a cloth or whatever and pretty much just scrub it, give her a good old uh, scrub down, getting her all, uh, all clean. So what I'll do guys, is I'll run this uh, across, get her all wiped down, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay guys, so here we are. Pretty much, I uh, took me some solvent here. Pretty much, I took me some solvent here, and I wiped down the, uh, the areas I'm going to be working on. And then I took me a scraper, pretty much, uh, well, this scraper here. And I scraped off the loose uh, glue, what I could get off. Uh, there looks like to be a mixture of two, possibly three glues here. Uh, one of the glues is uh, your contact cement. And another glue seems to be a softer type of glue, possibly a carpet uh, adhesive or something like that. Uh, whatever it was, it didn't uh, cure or harden the way it should. So pretty much, uh, next step here is to take a, uh, a sander of some kind and run over this with uh, um, sandpaper and try to knock off, um, you know, some of the uh, uh, glue that might be just a little bit stubborn, but will come off with uh, sandpaper. And then after that, of course, is another wipe down, and then we could probably start applying our coating. And just got the sanding done. As you can see there, I have uh, this side all stripped down. The uh, gold part there is the contact cement, and it's pretty much well adhered to the fiberglass, so I think they're pretty well safe in uh, staying there. The dots there on the bottom left are uh, deep rock chips. They're not through by far, they're just um, just deep. And of course, the top row are the screw holes, which I am going to end up uh, filling. Pretty much, um, I did the other side here, and it's pretty much the. Uh, I did the other side here, and she's pretty much the same uh, story here with the rock chips and uh, stuff like that. So I'm going to let uh, clean this up a little bit here, and then we'll go on to the next uh, step. Now we got the sanding all done, it's time for uh, the filler. Now of course, uh, there's probably another method out there, or other methods that'll work better, last longer, but uh, for me, I am going to use uh, Bondo to fill up the little uh, rock chips, pits and holes. So of course, um, I've used this method before with the uh, cardboard as your uh, you know, mixing tray or whatever you want to call her. And uh, again, I'm gonna do it again. So of course, uh, opening up the can. It's 
kind of funny, you know, it's been years since I've had one of these open, but you never forget that smell of the, uh, well, Bondo itself, right? <clears throat> when I was a kid, I remember my dad coming home um, smelling like this stuff. And uh, that's kind of weird. So of course, you take some out, put it on your mixing tray or board or whatever you're gonna use. And I never wanna mix up more than you can use in uh, about a four minute stretch because once you've added the hardener to it, it starts to, uh, starts to harden. Basically what you've got uh, is a chemical reaction once you've got the hardener going there that uh, starts everything in motion. So we'll add our hardener. Now of course there's going to be people out there that'll say hey you used too much hardener or you used uh, not enough hardener or uh, why are you doing it that way when there's another method or hey you're crazy or and uh, hey those people are entitled to their position or um, opinion but um, for me you know this is my method this is me doing it and uh, this is how how she's going to be so of course you uh, mix that all up get her all uh, all good and mixed and like I said she starts to uh, chemical react pretty much as soon as you've added the hardener to her so uh, now you want to get at her and uh, get your mud slung before uh, she ends up with one giant uh, hard lump so let's get out there and uh, get her applied Okay guys, so here we are out, outside, out in our uh, item that we're going to be working on. So, just because it's uh, plus 25 out here for you doesn't mean the work surface is uh, at optimal working temperature. So of course, uh, you want to take that into account before you start working. Uh, like, if you're working outside, if it had a rain the night before, the temperature of the surface will be different and uh, all that. So basically, I'm going to get some Bondo in these little uh, holes here and then uh, we're going to go from there. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm putting it on a little bit hard, a little bit uh, thick, but uh, there's a reason for that, which uh, you will see here in a minute. And the thing about Bondo is uh, once you have her applied on the surface, uh, don't touch it again. Because chances are if you touch it a second time, um, it will have already uh, half set up and you'll end up making a mess. And of course, while I've been talking here, my um, hardener has activated and uh, has pretty much kicked in partly to do with the uh, warm temperatures and partly to do with the uh, the fact that uh, it has the chemical reaction. So I'm gonna go mix me up some more Bondo and uh, a little bit less hardener this time and then we'll uh, keep on rolling. Well guys, uh, here we go. I just got the uh, filler or Bondo or whatever uh, on the trailer. Uh, by no means am I a professional uh, automotive repair technician or uh, uh, auto body person or by uh, whatever you want to call it for the fancy name. But uh, up there at the top, um, I did a skim coat over top of all the screw holes, got them, uh, them squeezed in and filled. 
over here where the chips were a little deeper of course along the bottoms I put on a little bit thicker yeah I may regret it later uh, when it comes time to uh, sand it off I put it on thicker but uh, um, that way it'll give me a chance to have squeezed some in those holes and to have it all uh, well reasonably filled I know the uh, the bed liner will uh, um, hide uh, some of the finer chips and uh, you know hairline uh, cracks stuff like that you know how fiberglass gets uh, when it gets old but um, you know got to do what you can with what you got but guys we're gonna let this dry for a little bit and then probably come back out here and give her sand well guys uh, here we go now the uh, bondos drying off to uh, work just give it a good old sand of course, uh, there's going to be some areas that's going to need some extra sanding where I put it on a little bit thicker, but uh, hey, that's no big deal, I suppose, when you have uh, air tools and you're not hand sanding. And there's probably going to be a couple areas that may need to have a spot touch up or so, basically, end up having a resand. So, of course, I'm going to throw you on the uh, tripod here and uh, get sanding. Well guys, I got the sanding done here on this side all the way, uh, wrapping around the corner here. Have to do a little bit of hand uh, sanding right here um, by the gas line because I can't get my sander in there. But that's no biggie. <clears throat> uh, just starting to work on uh, this side here, getting this sanded. Should be able to do the majority of that with the uh, air sander and then uh, run over it with finishing paper when I'm done. Uh, so far, um, everything looks good. I may not even have to do a uh, second uh, coat for the fill. I might just, um, you know, again, I'm not painting it. I'm using truck bed coating, so it'll hide a little bit of, uh, little bit of imperfection. So yeah, again, I'll throw you on the old tripod and uh, start sanding. Well guys, there we go, got the uh, sanding done. Of course, I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna, if I'm gonna go over it a second time uh, for a second fill and a second sand, or if I'm just gonna call her good, um, you know, being like here and all. So of course, uh, let's remove all the dust and everything, and we'll, we'll see what we got.